It's the magic behind delivering unspoken kind of emotions that we go through day to day and putting them into images. I always find it mind-blowing how can a script try to just write what I have in mind. Welcome to the Afikra Podcast. My name is Mikey Mhenna. Today on this series, we have another episode of our outline series, and our special guest is Haya Khayret, who is an Egyptian director, cinematographer, and photographer, whose award-winning work caught my attention, and I figured she would be the perfect um, person to be part of the series. Haya, welcome to Afikra. Hi, welcome. Okay, so let me set the, the scene, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. The idea for today's interview, which I told you, but let me introduce this idea to the inter- uh, to the audience, is I basically want to have a process-focused conversation about what does it really look like to be a working photographer, cinematographer, uh, director of photography, uh, director, like what do these terms mean in the Arab world? And I kind of want to structure this as the advice and like inside information that you would give the childhood version of Heya. Because I think I have a lot of misconceptions about what it means to be a director um, in the Arab world, a working one who pays their rent with this money. (laughs) And I figured you are a really good example, a really good person to speak to um, about this. Is that okay? (laughs) Yeah, of course. Let's do this. Okay, so let, let me ask the, the first basic question, mm-hmm. which is, what does your week-to-week look like as a director living in Egypt, living and working in Egypt? Uh, okay. Uh, my week-to-week is quite different, I think, as as a freelancer, not necessarily as a director, um, because we don't get to have a lot of projects going on, or I, I choose not to have a lot of projects going on at the same time, or even during short periods of time. I like to take breaks and I like to like have a good couple of projects, projects throughout the year. I don't like to do a lot. Um, so, uh, I'm basically most of the time at home uh, reading, (laughs) Um, knowing more about uh, human behaviors and psychology mainly, uh, um, because that I think that what makes um, my work as an artist uh, kind of distinctive, because I I really focus on human behaviors and um, emotions. So my week to week is basically reading, watching films, uh, and maybe writing sometimes. Yeah. Okay, so I came across your work originally because you won this like really prestigious award. And it's mm-hmm. not an award um, that Egyptians have ever ever won. Basically, it's an award at Cannes for a mm-hmm. promising at the Cannes sort of film festival, the most prestigious film festival in the industry. Um, and this award, as I understand it, is for encur- encouraging young talent, right? It's, and yeah. the, the award you got is for cinematography in the field of cinematography. Mm-hmm. So basically, like the most prestigious uh, film award in the world is telling you, great job. You have a lot of, <laughs> a lot of right. potential. You're going to be great. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> How did it feel it's to insane. win that award? And were you just like, what the hell is going on? It's insane. It's insane. It's, uh, I, I think I didn't process it till, till this day. I think I'm, I'm still trying to digest what happened. And I'm, I'm still trying to like process that I, I, I actually went there. I'm not, it happened. Um, so yeah, it feels overwhelming overwhelmingly great, beautiful, and pressuring, actually, very pressuring, very stressful, because yeah. it puts a lot of uh, pressure and stress over uh, me in terms of what's next? How are you going to top that? Because that's really the step, the beginning. It's a baby step. It's like an encouragement 
for my talent at a very young age. And, and because I'm still, I still have a lot to do and a lot of, I hope, years to live. Uh, so um, it puts a lot of pressure since I, since the day I came back from Cannes and I'm, and I'm very selective of my work and I'm trying not to overburn myself um, uh, because um, I'm really thinking about what would make me go back there. So it's it's really pressuring yeah. in, in that in that sort. But it's it's crazy. It's uh, you know, it's, it's 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 crazy being recognized. Like, and you're not, and not, yeah. and not just recognized. You're recognized at camp. And that's insane. So, were you? Um, I read online that you didn't believe it, that the, like the interview went to your spam, mm -hmm. basically the mm -hmm. email went to your spam. It didn't go to my spam. I thought it was spam. I thought it was like, uh, someone's trying to hack my account or someone's trying to like, uh, spam me or something. Uh, I didn't believe it. I didn't reply for the first day. And I kept like, uh, um, uh, looking around over the internet, who are those people? I, I know Anjou. There are very well-known developers of lenses um, in, in the industry worldwide. Uh, so I was like, "Why are they sending me? <laughs> Why me? And how did they get to know my name? Is there something behind that? Is am I am I going to be like? Uh, I don't know." Uh, Till, till before I traveled in like five <laughs> days or four days, I was like, are they go going to send me the confirmation for my flights or is this all a lie? And I have made all the publicity and the press is talking about something that's not happening. And actually till I went to the Wait, airport. Even after the press came out, you still didn't, you still didn't yeah. think it was real? <laughs> till I was at the airport. I was like scanning my flights and I'm, like, okay, I hope this is true. <laughs> I hope, I hope this is really happening. So I really had a hard time believing this. Yeah. Because it doesn't happen. It just Did doesn't you, happen. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, from your perspective, how did they find out about you? Because I remember when I spoke to you on the phone, right? Mm -hmm. When I spoke to you about having you on Afikra, Mm -hmm. You were also incredulous. Like you were also like, "Why? I don't know. What do you want to talk to me about?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, if that's not yeah. how you feel about Africa, I, I, I can't imagine how you feel about Khan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, why? Why me, guys? Well, how did you find my name? I'm always like suspicious, and I'm always really. I, I'm I, I'm a suspicious person. So yeah, it takes me a, a long time to believe. Uh, uh, things and I, I like to dig deeper behind why did someone reach out to me? Why do they want to talk to me? Uh, um, so when I asked them about this, uh, yeah. they they told me that uh, they were looking for a woman in the MENA region to uh, to receive this award this year. And there were several names on the list. I don't know their list, but they said there there were several names, and uh, they just found out. Um, I fit what they were looking for in terms of uh, the quality of work that I deliver. Uh, um, we, they didn't talk much about what they really liked about my work. All that they said was that it had a signature and that this is very distinctive because it's not, it's not, it's not really common in this young generation for people to have signatures. Uh, um, to, to make a signature in a short t period of time, it takes it usually takes years and years for a director to 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 build uh, and create uh, a persona for himself. So I think that what caught their eyes, or that that's what they said uh, to me during the first interviews uh, we've done together, or there in Cannes after even uh, screening my work during the festival. That's what everybody said about my work. So I think this is how they um, chose me. So do you, um, do you know what that signature is? 
I think I don't try to show off. مش بتفزلك. I'm just just real, just simple. And for from my own point of view now, people are really trying to flex muscles in the industry. They're trying to be too technical, and I'm I'm not against that by any sorts. But uh, the simple cinema, the The 90s movies we all died for because they were beautiful. We, I miss this in the cinema and this is what, what I try to achieve in my work. Like the simple kind of entertaining films that catches your heart. Um, so yeah, I think it's, that's what they said as well. It's simple. It's simple that people just forget to, to be simple. <laughs> mm. So let's, I want to go back to the sort of the, the basic premise, right? If you were to give uh, the sort of child um, version of you, you're supposed to sit down with like a child Heyo, right? Little girl Heyo. So she's like 10 years old or five years old in the 90s watching these simple movies. Mm-hmm. What did she love about movies that you still love? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, b- b- uh, I think it, uh, it's the magic behind uh, delivering unspoken kind of emotions that we go through day to day and putting them into images or script. Um, I always find it mind blowing how can a script try to just write what I have in mind. Like if I'm, I'm watching a film and there's a conversation between two people and it's getting framed up or getting tensed or anything, or in the whole, uh, somebody says something It gets me. It gets me. The, the script gets me. The how someone else is feeling the kind, the same kind of emotions that I feel. This gets me, and this is what I always try to to like stick to in my work. For for that, it is relatable, and I think and know this child was amazed by how. She can even see her feelings out on the screen, I think. And maybe yeah. um, seeing her dreams, seeing her, uh, her past. Um, it's like taking a stroll into your, your future, into yourself, into your dreams, and into your wanderings. Cinema is magical. <laughs> يعني, it's, it's a very magical world. And it's really when I, when I was a child, and I felt like, no, okay, it's a huge world. The, the world is huge and I can't wait to live it. Did you always want to uh, be behind the camera when you were a kid? Yes. I've always wanted to be behind the camera, even though I always... Uh, يعني اللي هو I put up shows for my parents and I used to like go and act for them and dance for them <laughs> and do some scenes that I loved from films but I growing up I um, I I know I cannot be in front of the camera <laughs> at all but but behind the camera is something that I have been doing since I was six. I used to photograph since I was six. So I really love the lens. Yeah. So what did that girl not understand? So she understood that she loved the magic. What did she not understand? So if you were to sit, sit with that her, right? That six-year-old mm. or 16-year-old. Um, what did she not understand about what it means to actually have a career in this world. I think she didn't understand that it is 
not all your dreams can come true and that you have to give up some of your dreams and that uh, it's not as magical as it is <laughs> it's it's really tough for it and it's really uh, it's not it's not fun and games it's not as beautiful as we see it it's it's beautiful but it it really really uh, kills the mind and it kills the your body and it's really tough it's uh, i'm i'm not sure if if uh, if anyone can handle being in this industry so this kid didn't know how tough it is to be there to create this magic uh, yeah i think that's it and i i think she didn't know that um, having a career out of your passion is really tricky because um, there's a fine line between losing yourself to that career and for it being only a career and trying to, to, to hold into those strings that makes it a passion because a passion doesn't pay the rent. The career does. So there's a fine line between both Keda and Mo. Not to like outburn yourself and take all the projects that you get. And staying with that baby heart that loves the magic of cinema. So this fine line is very tricky and because I've seen most of people and I talk to most of people who said that they they unfortunately lost their passion because of it turning into a career. So um, that's a very tricky part. Yeah. Because for this kid, Diani, she, she didn't really love anything in this world except cinema and except creating images. But uh, um, if the passion died, the soul will die as well. So uh, there's a fine line, but the head You know, like when I was a kid, I used to love like, um, like these beautifully crafted. I loved film and TV when I was a kid, but I also loved the sort of these beautifully crafted commercials. Mm. And I always thought of them like kind of like these like little haikus. And that if you could make this medium that is so, for lack of a better term, like so easy to have them be kind of these lame formulaic commercials right mm -hmm. if you could have if you could do it well it was this like weird sort of poetry this commercial you know like <laughs> com yeah. commercial poetry yeah essentially i sort of love the challenge of it um were there commercials that you loved growing up that you still like think about that you're like oh my god that, that was so funny or that was brilliant um or do you remember any of them when you were a kid or no oh that one feed away um في واحد كده كان بتاع شوكليت شوكولاتة ايه؟ شوكولاتة حاجة كان انيميشن كده they're sketching شوكولاتة مانوش ايه و هي اتس لايك واحد بيتقدم لواحدة في البيت and معاه مامته وحماته في البيت و شوكولاتة ريكورا شوكولاتة حاجة كده it was it was really inside ها يعني وكان صوتهم بيضحك جدا and I still hear it in my head وفي واحد تاني كده بتاع ماكدونالد زمان قوي لما كانت الدنيا لسه رخيصة يعني it was الجنجل كانت اللي بتقول تسمحوا لي شوية خمسة عايزة أقول على المنيو خمسة ف it was promoting for the Five pounds menu that's no longer there. It's not even for one fries. Uh, that and I, yeah. I really remember the jingle. And uh, I think the first time it's a lot. That's a bit more come in. Can I need to be? I still remember it. And the Tori Nour is an advert. Yeah, yeah. Advertising guru of most. كان هو دايما صوته هو الفويس اوفر بتاع كل الاعلانات واحنا صغيرين فانا كل الاعلانات اللي هتيجي في دماغي دلوقتي هي اتهاز طارق نورز فويس اوفر ذيم يعني 
اعلانات هي دي احلى حاجه فيها اظن ان هي you have like 20 seconds or 30 seconds this takes your mind forever <تصفيق> يعني for like 20 years yeah. بعد ما تشوف الاعلان if, if, you, if you're capable to انك تعمل كده يبقى انت برافو فهو الاعلانات دي بالنسبه لي هو واو انتوا ازاي انا لسه فاكره كل غير دلوقتي word by word Yeah, I mean, what does it take to, um, in your mind, uh, so I want to talk about commercials more broadly, right? Okay. But before we do, do you, do you feel like you have a healthy relationship with that part of your job? Or is it something that you hate? Like, you know, ugh, I hate I have to do this. I have to direct another commercial. Or are you like, no, 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 this is part of my job that I love. And it's not everything I do, but this is one of the things I do. I get to work on, inshallah, I get to work on features and shorts and TV shows, but I also do commercials and I really enjoy it. Most of it's, uh, it's not that I love it, honestly, and it's not that I hate it. It's a very weird relationship, Mabinia, Mabinia commercial. I, uh, I love this face and I appreciate this face. But I don't want it to stay. So it's like a, a, a relationship that you know is going to end at some point. So I'm not attached to it. Mm. Um, um, I'm, I'm trying to take the best out of it. I'm trying to practice and I'm trying to learn more. It's like school, or, or a book that I'm finishing, or a book, mm. you know, a book that I'm studying, or a course, or something like that. So I, I, you never loved school. We never did. You never love anything that you study. You never do love it. لا. But uh, you appreciate it. You know, it's important. But I, I truly appreciate it. Yeah. And I, I'm truly grateful for being in that career دلوقتي, and this phase in my life. Uh, but alhamdulillah, and, uh, I try my best to, uh, to not hate it. in terms of a يعني انه i don't i don't take commercials to the what i'm ashamed uh, and not to outburn myself and because i don't love the commercials but i try to stay away from it why i keep my distance why and i just do the commercials that i feel close to my heart or the commercials that i feel like they're gonna be different in a way or another or that i can get something out of them I can add to them, I can add to the briefs. But to like a at the nafsi shwaya to love it. Not to only appreciate yeah. it. So yeah, it's I think it's a mature so healthy back, relationship. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I I want you to I want to see if you were giving advice back to now had a little older version of you, right? So now mm-hmm. like a college age version of you okay mm-hmm. yeah what are the like the the do's and the don'ts for doing the doing a directorial work for as a commercial in the commercial world in advertising the things that you have to do that maybe students don't understand but the things that like their traps avoid them at all cost <laughs> never yeah. make these mistakes yeah yeah but what are remember. the do's and don'ts Okay, the do's is to stick to what you believe in, to stick to yourself, and to um, not to listen to people who are telling you, مثلاً, to do this or that if you don't believe in it. يعني مثلاً, for example, uh, most of the people are prone to, uh, or they are pro to, um, and know your name to be everywhere and to like to enter. Uh, in the industry for everyone to know you and to gain publicity and and to be famous together I'm, I'm against that honestly for home the this school of uh, of approaching careers is like okay do this and do that to take all the commercials you get take all the briefs blah 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 and I didn't do this I'm not gonna do that but at any cost do this yani if you believe and we don't want to Uh, or to like overwork uh, yourself okay uh, do it of course even though if it is hard uh, um, but that way ahead 
stay stay true to yourself, to your authenticity. Uh, never ever forget that this is your passion. If you don't want it to, if you don't want it to turn into a career, uh, try to stay grounded. You need to like when you feel like you're burning out, try to like take a rest and get back to what makes you really want to work this job, have this job because you don't you don't have an alternative getting into this career. You cannot shift careers and you cannot just go into banking, Masaman, Tenium, or like uh, go to, uh, uh, for me as a director, <laughs> Yanni, I cannot go from being a director to being a creative, Yanni. It doesn't work like that. I will, do, Yanni. I will not go work in an agency tomorrow. If, uh, if instead of like uh, falling into that trap of <laughs> just like everyone else, focus and listen to yourselves, kida, and know when you need to rest and to need to, to get back to Kida who you are and to remember why are you doing what you're doing, listen to yourself and just take a break because we need breaks. To so take breaks. Well, so for me as a woman, there there's a there's a lot of don'ts. It's it's different than being as a filmmaker. Would you like me to talk about being a filmmaker in general or being a woman filmmaker? Both. Go both. Okay. Go for it. So being a woman... Start with a woman. That's the first thing that you came up. Yeah. Yeah. Don't... Don't lose your femininity. Khalis. You're a woman. Uh, because that's a trap. I lost my identity as a woman. For like the, the first four or five years, I lost my identity because it's a very male-dominated industry. Uh, if I don't, just prove yourself. But not to, to to forget that you are, are that you are a female, yani you don't have to be like a man. Uh, don't but do do don't believe what they say, and don't listen to their talks because people are gonna talk. And this industry has a lot of uh, psychological stress. Get a, um, in terms of you know, fear competition. Ali, get them, get them, get them. So. People would talk about one another, and people would like say all kinds of stories about one another. Okay, but don't let this stop you, Khalis, and don't listen to it. Us, and don't try to even uh, defend yourself. That's what I learned, Bordeaux. And you know, defending yourself wastes time. You don't need to, Khalis, because uh, it's not about that. It's work. Just focus on your work. Uh, um, do be politically smart, be socially smart, because I learned this the hard way. I lost a lot of jobs being uh, very stubborn in my head or being uh, too arrogant sometimes. You mean but, like you mean uh, like you mean like business politics? Yeah, business politics. Yeah, it, it requires a lot of. Uh, so, uh, there's flexibility, I think. Flexibility in, in the mindset, Yani. Yeah. You need to just know how to enter everybody's mind. Just like um, you need to know how to, to speak to all sorts of people, uh, all classes, all mindsets, uh, different backgrounds. I need to le- you need to learn this. Uh, with business politics, in terms of Bordeaux and no, it will not go as you want. You will lose things. But if I can yeah. go back in time, but saying I wouldn't change it, Bordeaux, but if I can go back in time, like when I started directing commercials, Masalan, I wouldn't be that stubborn because learning or you know, staying in this industry. You always lose things. You always lose things. And if uh, the fights are there and they're going to be there, uh, 100%. you might as well be a little bit more flexible because everything gets solved. But we don't have to go fighting. We don't have to go to the project, or not to take it. 
um, and also uh, last last thing was you know uh, don't take it personally علشان it's a lot of psychological stress شغلنا عشان you get to like deal with كل طول الوقت مع ناس كتير and you're always like making deals and, and uh, leading people as a director leading people a lot of, a lot of people mm. and listening to clients and 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 so don't take it personal homa they're not fighting you خالص uh, try to like build this boundary between you and your job and then I'm حاول اعمل till this day I'm not I didn't achieve it are we بس I'm trying to build boundaries ما بيني وما بين نفسي في شغلي علشان ما تبقاش a toxic relationship أصلا بس yeah okay. so the I've found the best way to fight toxicity has been through community essentially at least for me right because okay. I have to like lean on friends who are in the same who are in the same world as me who help me get the toxic shit out of me because like mm. it, once you ingest stuff it become it gets inside of you and then mm. you get you yeah. become in a bad spot and then you need yeah. to talk to your friends who are like listen you're doing all right you got to get it out of you yes is is being a director like a very lonely profession where you're kind of working on your own and the other directors are kind of your competition because you're losing projects to them or do you feel like you're in a community of people who really deeply understand what you're doing and you guys are working together because i kind of feel like it would be kind of lonely it is very lonely very extremely yeah and extremely How do you manage lonely this loneliness career. It really drains me out sometimes and it really saddens me sometimes because I cannot share I get kitsira away the shoulder with other people because they wouldn't understand. Uh, so I have like a very tiny amount of friends from the industry. Those are the people that kind of understand what I go through. Uh, but, um, yeah. Um, I think you just learn how to live with it and and creating the boundary لانك بتكلم معاك عليها it's like um, you learn how to you know to do stuff as zarar and just like mission I can only have two characters you try to like isolate this character from this from that character and then if the director character mm-hmm. comes in words a we I'll feel very lonely, Fallon. Um, and I try to talk to the people that understand my my sufferings in my career. Um, but say, when, when there's something out of hand that is happening, mention day to day, Yanni, for for everyone that works, they have their own kind of problems, the one day to day. But if there's something that is I really haven't faced this before, Masalan. I need second opinion or I need to like vent out, Masalan, this kind of weird situation that just happened. Then I'm going to talk about this. But it's really lonely and no, you don't have someone to tell you how was your day at work and you can simply answer because it's it's not like that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's It's... It's more complicated and it's not something easy to talk about and it's not something that you can that other people can imagine. Uh, so yeah, I, I think I, I always avoid how was your day <laughs> question kind of question. How was your day at work? It was, it's always <laughs> like, yeah, it went well. Yeah. No, it was very hectic and I need to sleep and that's it. And I don't talk more. Uh, yeah. I am. Uh, Yeah, it's really lonely. <laughs> That triggered me, Shway. <laughs> This question triggered me, Shway. I think you just yeah. learned how to live with it. I yeah, get it. I mean, I would no imagine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it's funny hearing you talk about passion. The image that, like, as you're talking about it, the image I have in my mind is this, like, this uh, stove. 
uh, like a fire on a stove, right? Yeah. Okay. And it's like you don't want the fire to go out, but you also can't afford for the fire to be too big because it will like burn the whole house down. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I feel like you're in this this balancing act of like, okay, I don't want no passion, but I can't have too much passion. I need just like to keep it a healthy amount that can like heat 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 the 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 pot, but like yeah. less. But not overburn the rice. <laughs> Is that how you feel? <laughs> yeah, you can't uh, overburn the rice. You can't also like burn your whole house down. Come in. You have yeah. to like chill out. Like don't be so passionate. What's this that about not not being so passionate? It's about uh, 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 لا, مثلا, being so passionate is really important. But uh, and no, not to overtake your world is what's important. Yani, going back in time, شوية, a couple of years ago. I I used to like um, do I, I didn't do anything in my day except for just uh, editing pictures, uh, editing uh, videos, uh, creating, 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 and then um, it uh, it it overtook my life. شوية يعني ما بعيش الحياة فيها بالانس. But I think it's not about the passion that is big and to be handled. It's about how to deal with it. Yani, I can love you so much, so, so much, but I ha- I have to know how to deal with that amount of love. It's, uh, Michelle, it's not the solution to love you less. It's the solution is how to give you that love, so that it doesn't end into another toxic relationship. Because if I, like, mm. I loved you, I loved you, I loved you, I loved you. You, you, you just feel like, okay, I'm shy. Okay. For example, if all the time I work, I work, or I read about cinema, I read about filmmaking, I read about this, or this, or this, because that's what I, I did. Go to know what all my books are about cinema and filmmaking and art. And just like it happened to me, one day I felt like, okay, I don't want to read anymore. I don't want to watch any more films. I don't know. I don't know how to take it more than that. فانا اللي بحاول اعمله انه يبقى عندي حتة مش ما فيهاش السينما وما فيهاش الفيلم ميكينج just like when it comes to books مثلا I try to read about psychology or sociology or human development عامة not cinema it helps me in a way for my passion but it's not like directly yeah. my passion and the same goes with uh, uh, what I do day to day مثلا uh, instead of Like uh, editing pictures, the, the the minute I wake up in the morning, I meditate. It helps me. It will open up my mind when I when I edit. It helps me indirectly for my creativity. But مش طول الوقت بعمل الحاجة دي. So it's it's really about how you yeah. live your life while having this passion, not not making it uh, less خالص. If that makes sense to you. <laughs> Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. You know, it's like, and I love sports. Um, and every now and then, like, they, sometimes I hear people like commentators or analysts or whatever they'll be talking about, or players. And they'll say, you know, like in basketball, for example, they'll say, um, you know, some of the players in the NBA don't actually love basketball. But they were so good at it. And mm. they make so much money. And mm-hmm. like they're supporting a million people in the whole family. Okay. You know, they can't leave it. They like it. They like it a lot. But they're not yeah. like dying, living yeah. and uh, sleeping and breathing every single moment basketball. Yeah. Can you, can people survive in the industry as directors if they feel that way? Actually, they survive more if they feel that way. Which is, I think... Uh, mm. يعني, hey, and Muskila, when you're so into it and you're so in love with it, that you you just can't accept when it's less than what you want, when it's less than what it should be, when it's less than what you expected. Just like a relationship, Allah, it's the same. It's like 
loving your partner so much. So if this love is too much, your expectations are very high and you get lost in this trap of this partner not meeting your expectations. So it kills you. In the end, you feel like there's something wrong with it because you, you cherish this person and you cher and you and you would live your life just trying to make them happy or 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 giving them so much love to what if I it's like this with the project Yanni. I feel like if I'm making a movie today I uh Yani لو ما دوستش عن زرار بتاع إنه to balance it out and to stop my passion at at a certain point عشان and 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 to remember that this is a skill as well مش بس passion I think إنه أنا ممكن ما منش غير مشهد في اليوم مثلا and this would kill the schedule because I I would want to perfect it يعني هخش في syndrome كده بتاع إنه خلاص أنا أنا I will not accept less than what I have in mind but actually I think those yeah. who survive most are are those who have it as a skill doctor men the love for it because they wouldn't be disappointed they wouldn't be very frustrated if their dreams didn't come true and uh, uh, they wouldn't be like a, like a kid who who really wants to know to to go to that swing and their parents are telling them no it's broken muscle فاهم فاللي هو I'm always like اللي هو أنا بفتكر نفسي وأنا صغيرة and this magic and this love for cinema and 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 فلو this passion is لسه جوايا and this heart هو هو فلو أنا بعمل حاجة بعمل project and I couldn't get this out of me it would really يعني break my heart فلو حد تاني عنده ده أقل It would be better, I think, Yani. At least they would know how to survive and know how to come yeah. back tomorrow. Even if they didn't get what they want 100%. Do you, um, yeah. It's funny, it's so funny hearing you talk about this because um, I feel like when you, when you talk, I'm like, hey, it needs, you know, sometimes I can imagine that. You know, you seem to be like such an emotional person um, and mm. a very intensely passionate that that you could you would be susceptible to becoming cynical, right? About the industry yeah. and about the how hard it is, uh, the life of an artist and the life of a, somebody in the arts saying like, you know, screw this. I'm out. I hate this. Right. This is too, too intense yeah. for me. Right. Yeah. And. It seems like what you need is a little encouragement. And it's hilarious because the Khan award that you won is the special yeah. award for encouragement. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's almost like the industry was like, hey, hey, Rui, Rui, <laughs> you're fine. I get that. You're Allah, doing amazing. <laughs> yes, yes. And when had be only, what was that for? It's not for a specific thing. It's, uh, it's like an encouragement award. And this really means. way more to me than receiving it for something yeah. because that's what I really needed. But, oh, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's like a, a pat on the back. No, it's you're like you needed well. somebody <laughs> to say, like, you're going the right direction. Keep going. Exactly. You're, what that you're doing good job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Because that, that was just what I was looking for. So, uh, good. <laughs> yeah, I want to talk about the what it looks like. What's different about three different roles? Okay, so I'm going to read three different jobs you've done, and I want you okay. to explain to me what those jobs look like. Okay. Okay. One is. First assistant cameraman, okay? Yeah. One is, so first assistant cameraman for a TV series, right? Yeah. Which you've done yeah. that many times. The yeah. other one is director of photography on a short film, which you've yeah. also done. And then the third is directing a, uh, an ad spot. Hmm. What is different about the way you process each of those three jobs? 
طيب اه لا they are entirely different كلهم even though the assistant cameraman and the director of photography are on the same department they are entirely different uh, um, so being uh, um, an assistant cameraman that puts you under a lot of uh, uh, pressure and stress in terms of uh, uh, skills because it's very super super technical um, um and it's the it's like a skill that you uh, it's it's um يعني هب قد كانه مسل بيكبر focus pulling it's mainly about the focus pulling it's like uh, adjusting the focus of the camera whenever the character moves and that is really tough really really tough um for this skill بتبقى احسن مع الوقت hold on one second i want to yeah. i want to explain that to i want to yeah. explain that to the okay. people listening Focus okay. pulling is literally there is a wheel that you're in charge yep. of and yep. you're literally moving that wheel in a circle to make sure that the person who the camera is pointing towards is in focus. So it's not autofocus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you don't touch a screen to like make them a square around their face. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you're no, literally no. pulling a wheel back and forth, turning a wheel yeah. to put somebody in focus. Is that right? Am I wrong about that or am I right about that? Okay, yeah, you you are mostly right about it. How about it's not about best and the wheel but it's hard and that's it. في حاجات كتير قوي بتخلي الفوكس بوينت يتغير. So it uh, depends on the lens you're using, depends on the light that is on set. Uh, if it's uh, dim, the focus is harder. If it's too bright, the focus is harder, and it uh, depends on uh, the uh, Uh, it isn't gonna get technical. Uh, it depends on the uh, exposure of the uh, of the image. It depends on um, how many steps are the characters taking and their pace. Uh, which direction are they moving? Uh, and um, now it's a little bit, little bit easier because back in the days I used to do to do it. Um, I used to like scale kada bit. Uh, between the lens and the and the person, and just like uh, put marks on the floor for them. I do. I do, I don't even look at the screen. I just look at the floor when they step into that mark, and this mark is is that mark on the wheel, and I mark the wheel as well. And when they go to the other step, it's that mark, and you have to like have this tense of um, pace with the wheel. Uh, uh, in in relationship with their own pace and speed and if they are walking masan towards the camera but their face is like that or or to the other side or they look backwards the focus changes it's not it's not like it's not it's not easy really mm. and you always have to make sure the eyes are in focus it's not the body so that if the eyes are in focus you ensure that the body is in focus if the eyes are not like Strictly, they have this kind of hina lam adi, so the body is not in focus. You lost it. So this is wow. really how the focus goes. Yeah, <laughs> and فعلا هو it depends on the lens. يعني the tighter the lens, like uh, the the tighter the shot, the harder it is uh, because the focal lens, uh, focal uh, length yeah. changes. Oh, it's, it's really technical, but uh, so it's it's more of a skill, and it's uh, and and you have to be very well aware of yeah, uh, the cameras and uh, and the technologies that's happening day to day because that's that's your job. Your job is to like be in charge with all the settings in the camera and to make sure that uh, uh, we're shooting the same. The same exposure, the same white balance, uh, the same everything during, on every shot. Uh, your job is yeah. to make sure that the material goes to, to the DTI, the IT uh, uh, safely and that they have the material. Because if the material is gone, it's your responsibility as a focus puller. So you're responsible for millions of pounds. Uh, um, and you are also responsible for... Uh, all the gear, all all the gear on set, 
that has to do with the camera department. You are responsible for uh, the gear, where to, how to move, where to move, uh, where to be uh, put, uh, where to, uh, how it's going to be uh, transferred from one location to another. You are responsible for that all the time. So, um, it's uh, it's it's more of a, wow. a craft, Fanon. Akhtar men in Nahat has to do awi with the cinema, as in the magic of cinema, Akhtar. Even though the focus pulling can be quite central. Bardo. Mas mas tool word. Okay, if I, you don't you don't have so much yeah. to add to the to the project as a filmmaker, best uh, without you there will there wouldn't be a film. But uh, the, the so the, yeah, this it is seems the like, assistant. It seems like yeah. almost like the job that you would learn the most doing. The job that you would learn the most doing. It seems like you would learn such an enormous amount doing that job. Yes, yes, hundred percent. I've I've stayed as a as an assistant for five years, and I didn't only learn. As a as an assistant, I had the yeah the 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 pleasure uh, learning from directors and DPs and art directors, and I I've been being on set as as a focus puller puts you in touch with all the departments: art director, uh, director, and DP, a direct contact, and this is very important because you get you get your uh, like a, you get your direction from the DP and the director and you get to talk to the art director if there's something on set that's going wrong or because that's your responsibility as well. But, um, yeah. it, it makes you kind of, uh, very high uh, detailed oriented. I know, but you know how to do it on the side. Uh, uh, and it, it's uh, it's a really great, great, great way to learn more about camera movement as well. To learn about being a camera operator, because it, it's just it's a connection. And uh, you just like move with the cameraman, so you're learning how to move with the camera as well, because you're moving with him. You're learning the his pace. You're learning how to pan and shift and tilt and كل الحاجات دي. Yeah. Okay, so um, I want to keep on going, but then I really want to come back to asking you about yeah. um, Egyptian Egyptian television for a second, just because you've worked on a bunch of different shows. Yeah. So tell me, compare this to um, what it means to be a, a DOP on a short film like like Dark Chocolate. Okay, being a DOP is is mainly you are responsible for everything that goes inside the frame. Uh, but uh, your main uh, role is to translate all the motion and uh, uh, direction that the director wants with light, to translate this with light. So you just read the script very well. You, uh, I, I sat with the director and I just like, uh, I talked with him. How do you see this? How do you see that? How's the character? Tell me more about the about them, their backgrounds. Uh, so I, I kind of like uh, build the structure for the light for the film. Uh, so mainly for Dark Chocolate, it was um, dim and it was a very uh, low exposed film because uh, the character was not in a good place. She was kind of depressed or uh, in a very anxious face in her life. But um, this is how I saw it and this is how he saw it as well. But it, it was warm as well because her emotions were, she was very emotional and that's why she was feeling sad. But uh, the, the whole tonality of the film was very warm and very um, wooden kind of uh, colors to keep the sense of grounding and uh, rawness mm. film, film, film image. And this is what the script was talking about. Uh, um, basically, uh, being a DP, uh, you just learn how to translate everything into light and you direct the 
the focus puller because I was the camera operator on the film. So I, I just direct my focus puller uh, onto how I want the focus to be pulled. Well, do I want it sensual? Do I want it firm? Do I want it harsh? Uh, speedy, pace wise. That, that's all my directions and the director as well. Wait, hold on. I have, I have questions about those those words yeah. you just used. Yeah. You said, do I want it sensual? Do I want it harsh? Is that what you just said? Yeah. Yeah. So what, if what do you mean by that? Okay. So it's here's the camera. Okay. And I'm the character being photographed. And there's a character sitting right beside me on that wall, by that wall. And you can just pull your focus from me to them, like tuck, it's like the in the action films, okay? Like you go and focus, mm -hmm. okay? Or in the action films, or if there's a fight, or if there's a harsh conversation going on, or if it's going to hit you with something, or it's gonna like uh, tickle you, hatta or keda, yani you just need to go besura away. This is harsh, or maybe sensual, and that's how it was dark chocolate. It was very sensual, so you just like go mm -hmm. slowly because they are talking in a very slow, quiet conversation. There's no need to like make it harsh. This doesn't go along with the script. Yeah, uh, you just like put it so you, very slowly. It's, it's, it's like it's it, it's changing the way the audience is actually feeling. Of course, the characters essentially. Of course, in the of story. Course. Yeah. So the focus puller, and I think no, he has to know. The scene, uh, Akid has to read the script. But Sani, if he didn't read the script quite well, like a few scene, and I, this is how I used to do it, Sarah. When there's a scene, I just like focus with the prova that's happening. Uh, just to make sure how I'm going to pull my focus. And if it went wrong, the, the DP will direct me. But Sani, I have to have like a sense for what's happening. I have to have a, a sense for the genre, for the for the uh, mood of the scene. Because it impacts the emotions that you get. Everything in the frame impacts the emotions that happen. From camera movement to focus pulling to the light, everything. Okay, amazing. Okay, now yeah. let's talk about what does it mean to direct an ad spot? How do you approach that? Okay, uh, um, uh, it happens in a way in the, um, you take the brief, you try to understand your clients, try to know what they're looking for, try to learn the brand very well. And I look uh, into their old commercials. I always do that just to, to get a sense of what do they approve of? What do they approve on being uh, screened. Maybe that, that's what that's their mood. That's what they're looking for. Uh, um, yeah. And I asked about whether they want to stick to that or they are open to um, change. Okay, but that's the first part. And then I read a brief, and, and if there are any changes that I think might uh, add to that brief, I do it. Uh, I ask about it, I do it, and uh, this usually happens actually, Annie. Yeah, you get the brief, you get the script of it, and you get like a creative for how they want the scenes to look like and so on forth. Well, usually, yeah, the director's uh, uh, part is to, is to how, yeah, bend how to execute it, okay? You know how to do it. You can take and do it as is. But then you're only executing the creative you're getting. Oh, you can do your part skill. And you can do part to add your passion. Just like sugarcoat this masalan and to hot in signature topic. Because the brief is not coming to you yeah. It's going to you and three or four other directors and you are all pitching on that ad spot. But, um, yeah. What would make it different if I if I made it just like how they sent it? This is not Haya's work. This is the client's work 100% or the agency, the, the creative's work 100%. So it's, you try to put your signature into it. 
I try to make it uh, more personal and more like you, uh, more distinctive to them to get approved. Uh, and then if you want the pitch, you start producing it. And it's, it's really uh, different because you're leading 100 people, مثلا, uh, and you are having the business politics part with the client and the agency. And you're trying to like pitch your idea, taking an approval for every single detail on set. From the socks to the pillowcase to uh, the candidate is used in the background that no one's gonna see actually, and you, you're taking approvals on every single thing. So uh, it's really tough, Hashen. You just like build a whole world for uh, 20 seconds or 30 seconds. It's all a film. Yeah, and you have uh, a crazy budget. I have crazy budget. Yeah, crazy, crazy budgets. <laughs> Okay. Hey, I have two questions left. Okay. Do you think the best television in the Arab world is coming out of Egypt? Uh, I don't want to sound biased, but yeah. <laughs> why? Why do you think so? Why do you think it's... Uh, um, yeah, why do you think the best TV in the Arab world is coming out of Egypt? Um... Bossa and I think we have something different, Saraha. Hey, you know, we are we're very cinematic, even though we're we're shooting for TV. But uh, I think it's like it's more like uh, um, American television, Bordo. You know, it's the same, kida uh, Um But we focus away on the script. And we focus out on the craft uh, uh, um, in terms of in no uh, you can, um, we always have yeah, our stories and well crafted um, they're more relatable and they're more versatile and they're more diverse and they are uh, real yani yeah, no the people are trying to stay real and stay authentic to their paper, to the, to the script. That's my own POV, but I'm not seeing much of the country or the people or their authenticity and their, and their, um, يعني في دي اتاتشمنت كده ما بين بحس ان في دي اتاتشمنت ما بين المسلسل والحقيقه ما اعرفش ليه دايما maybe in terms of even light mm. I just feel like it's staged في حته كده staged واحنا definitely عندنا حاجات عامله كده كتير قوي برضو بس في حاجات مش عامله كده بس انا whenever I stumble upon TV of other countries uh, it's mostly staged. My in the cinema is 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 on another level. Yani, for for the Lebanese uh, film industry for cinema, it's crazy. It's crazy beautiful. Yani, good best TV series. It's not the same colors. Mm. 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 Yani, figa. Mas ana bahes ahna hena benhawen na 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 ala al gap al ma bain al al two industries yani. All right. My last question for you. Um, okay. is you talked about the sort of the magic of, of movies when you were, um, that you loved when you were younger. Yeah. So if you were to put together, you, you know, your top 10 list, top five list, favorite films, favorite, uh, filmmakers, whichever that you were to recommend, like somebody, somebody's never heard of films from the Arab world at all, or, or at all anything and you're like you got to watch these five akid wana wana sugayara yani wala dalwasi no no today like if uh based off your lifelong love for films okay ماشي my top one is بس انا يعني ديل بي نون برضه بس my top one is eternal sunshine the spotless mind for michel gondry mm -hmm. um uh, um and uh, uh, I love, I love 
there's this film that I grew up on and till this, till this day, I love it. It's uh, Princess Diaries. It's, uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I'm not, it's not, it's not that nineties film. Uh, it's, uh, which it's, one? <laughs> it's one for, um, the, the DP was, it was, uh, uh, um, Emmanuel Lubisky. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get it for you. It's, um, it's like a, um, a film, of, a film that talks about a little kid that is in an orphanage and, uh, her father, uh, um, goes to war and leaves her and, uh, and it's it's re it's a mm. masterpiece. It's an it's an artistic masterpiece, um, and uh, I love uh, Mommy or Xavier Dolan, uh, and I love Mother, uh, the one that had Jennifer Lawrence and mm -hmm. uh, Tree of Life for Terrence Malick. Uh, um, and I think these are uh, my top and uh, Enter the Void. Uh, and Requiem for a Dream. Uh, Cold War. Uh, Persona, Seven and a Half. These are classics but they are one of my go-tos when I have like a creative block and I go to watch these films for like to enrich my, my, my creativity again. Um, and lastly, and it has a huge debate on it, but Babylon. Mm, cool. Yeah. It got I on my it. list. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh Thanks so much for doing this. Um, You're welcome. It was really, really, really fun. And if the award from Khan wasn't enough, you have received the Africa <laughs> Encouragement Award. <laughs> Special Thank Encouragement you. Award. Even more important. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, Thank you so much. Thanks Annie. so much. I really I, appreciate it. It was a pleasure, Wallahi. I really appreciate having me in a give them. <laughs> yeah. If anyone's interested in connecting with you, it's easy to find you on social media. It's yeah. at H-A-Y-A-W-K-H-A-I-R-A-T. Alrighty. Thanks so much. Thank you. <laughs>